Mick and Sandra here from Mudbrick Herb Cottage. It's time for our autumn garden tour. We're a bit late this year because summer hung on for so long, but the weather's cooling down now, so we thought it was a great time to have a look around. So we've been quite busy over the Easter mm. break. I've been um, doing lots of weeding in the garden, getting rid of all those summer weeds and new sleeper edges along here. Now's a really good time to plant things like coriander and chervil and your Asian greens and your kale. So we've just planted some seedlings of coriander here. And the reason you do it this time in South East Queensland is because in summer they go to seed really quickly. Like you plant them and a week later they've gone to seed. So now is a really good time. They grow well throughout the winter time. You still need to replant over this growing season because they still only last about eight weeks. Yeah, they're relatively short. So they're, they're relatively they? short lived. We like to let them go to flower though because you can use the seeds then as well. But replanting over the winter months gives you a long growing season for your coriander. And look at all the nasturtiums coming up. Yeah. So we had nasturtiums growing here during the during the winter last year and now they've self-seeded and they're all coming up everywhere here. We'll take some out. We might leave a couple over there to, to grow. We've got some dill over here as well that we planted. So it's another one that prefers to grow through the winter months in, in Southeast Queensland. We planted some little seedlings there, but we also threw some seeds around as well. So we'll end up with a nice big crop of dill there. They grow really well, don't they, when they self-seed themselves too. So we generally let them go to seed. Yeah, sometimes some of these annuals, these short-lived annuals, are better grown from seed than, than actually buying a plant. If you buy tubes of, of these types of herbs, the, the chervil and the coriander and dill, when you're planting them, don't disturb the roots too much and always make sure that you soak them into some seaweed before you plant them out. That's what I do every time I plant, is I have my bucket of seaweed solution, I soak my tubes in that, and then I gently plant them without disturbing the roots and you get much better growth. And then we let them go to seed and drop the seed down so they just um, The next come lot up. comes up on their own. Yeah. So dill, love dill on my eggs, love it on salmon. We do a nice poached egg with some salmon. Well, Mick does it, he cooks the poached eggs, he's good at that. And, um, and the dill on that's beautiful, love it on fish as well. So then we've got the chervil here. Chervil also great through the, the winter months, so in, in southeast Queensland. And you can see I've also planted seeds of that, they're all coming up, there's lots of them there. I love chervil, it's a bit like, I use it a bit like parsley, you can use lots of it. The flavour is, is reminiscent of parsley but with a little bit of aniseed flavour, just gentle. And it's a really nutritious herbs and you can use it, lots of it. So just to sprinkle over veggies, over fish, Mix it with butter to then use with, say, carrots or peas. Mix it with some sour cream to put on your potatoes. It's a really, really delicious herb. It's a delicate sort of flavour, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very yeah. delicate and you can use a lot of it and, and quite nutritious. Then we also planted some kale. So we've got the black Tos Toscana kale that we planted. That's the really dark green leaf um, with a crinkle leaf. You can't really see that at the moment, but once it grows, you'll see that on there. And then the red, red Russian. Russian, yeah. So that's come right through For summer. summer. Which is unusual. Yeah, yeah. So, so we won't have to plant another one of those. Got some radicchio here uh, and some endives. They will grow all year round, but they're better at this time of year that, in our climate. They'll get better colour in them and form better heads, the radicchio, in the, in the, um, in the winter. winter time. Yeah. yeah. So they're good herbs, they're good bitter herbs, so good for digestion. So you can use those in salads or in stir fries um, and they help to stimulate your digestion. Now, before we move on, I'd like to look at the dandelion here. The dandelion comes up in the garden everywhere all year round, so I'd never have to plant it. I just wanna show you so that you know how to identify true dandelion. Now, the leaves on true dandelion are quite in, like sharply indentated, you can see. The dandelion, dent de lion, tooth of the lion. So, quite sharp, pointy indentations and smooth leaves. They don't 
really have any visible hairs on them. The stems of the flowers are single stems with one single flower on each stem and the stems are hollow. Break one off, there's your hollow stem and you can see the little bit of sap on there as well. So there's another weed called cat's ear, which people often get confused with dandelion and the leaves of it are more rounded and, and they're scalloped but, but more rounded and they have little hairs on them. F the flowers of the cat's ear are on branch stems, so you'll get a stem coming up and it'll branch out and you have more than one flower on one stem. And the stems aren't hollow like that. It's another great bit of herb, good for kidney function, good diuretic and also high in pot potassium. So it's a great herb to include in your, in your salads. The root's also used for liver health as well. We actually drink uh, dandelion root and chick these are of the chicory family, chicory root and coffee together in a blend and we have that every day so it's really nice. And how good does this wormwood look? I think we've had that in the pot for about four years yeah. now. It's, it looks really good doesn't it? Yeah, we cut it back in the winter and um, it just powers away every year. You wouldn't normally plant um, wormwood in the middle of your vegetable garden because the roots actually deter worms, but that's why we sat it in a pot. And it's grown so well in that pot. It's good for discouraging pests. That's why we put it there. The leaves are actually expel worms in humans as well. So you can use it to, you know, as a tea to help get rid of worms and parasites. And it's also a good bitter herb. So it's a bitter digestive herb. It's used in a lot of old, old style bitters. This is uh, Artemisia absinthium. So that tells you that this is the wormwood that was used in absinthe. You know that. Who's that artist who... Van Gogh, was Van it? Van Gogh chopped off his ear or something, didn't he? Because he went crazy. Because he went crazy after drinking, drinking too much absinthe. Yeah. But there is something in wormwood called thujone, and if you have it in large doses, it is really toxic to, to you. So just, you know, don't have too much if you're going to take wormwood. Let's go over and have a look at the horseradish. I think we'll get... Um, dig some up because Zanita's going to do some cuts today. Okay, we'll do that. So horseradish does grow better in cooler climates, so they like a cold winter, but we still have pretty good luck growing them here in southeast Queensland. Even up at, on the Tambourine and Springbrook and... Yeah, Tambourine, Springbrook, they can all grow horseradish up there. They like a reasonably deep soil. The roots might not get quite as big as what they do down south, but they're not too bad. They're good enough to make a nice horseradish sauce, with sauce, grate them up with a bit of vinegar to put on your... We have had large ones in that before too, Veggies actually. or yeah. steaks or, yeah, we've had quite large ones. Actually, I'll dig another one up because um, I needed, we'll need a little bit more than that. So we grow these from, from root cuttings to get more plants. Really good for colds and flu and like sinus, sinus problems, really good for that clear the nasal passages because they're nice and hot. This is also what we put into our fire cider as well. Yeah, look at that, they look great. Over here we've got some lovage. So lovage is a, I guess a little bit like celery in that it has that real herby, magi, stocky sort of flavour. So it's really nice in soups and stews, great in salad dressings as well. You have gotta be a bit careful how much you use because it can be a bit overpowering if you use too much. But you just chop up the leaves and the, the and Europeans the stem. love it, don't they? Yeah. Look, in colder climates, once again, you're, you're looking at a plant that gets about this high, or well, even higher, I yeah, think. Yeah, two metres. Yeah, up yeah. to two metres. But here we find the biggest we've ever had it is about a metre, and that was unusual for us here. Then just next to it here, we've got some purslane. So this just comes up in the garden. It's a bit of a weed, the purslane, but it's really high in omega-3s. So it's really great just to add to your salads. It's also got that mucilaginous um, texture to it, which is really good for your digestive system. They reckon if you feed your chickens purslane, the eggs will be higher in omega-3. Okay, behind us here, Yep. We've got some sage plants, there's three in pots here, and that long run there is uh, Salvia fruticosa Greek skies. So it's one that we really like to grow here because it grows so much better than the basic Salvia officinalis. Actually, they say that it's the one that's used 
to, as dried sage. Fruticosa. Like, yeah, fruticosa. Yeah. So it, fruticosa is is a Mediterranean uh, sage from from Greece, and it's been crossed with Salvia officinalis. Yep. So um, Salvia fruticosa, Greek skies. Fantastic to grow up here in southeast Queensland. It grows really big, and we get lots of leaves off it. Love it with potatoes. Love it with meats. It's really nice with any fatty meats. And even just with scrambled eggs and stuff like that, it's really nice. These three here are all officinalis, and they're different um, varieties of officinalis. So we've of got- sage. Yeah, of sage. So this one here is uh, golden sage. So it's got the different colored colors through the leaves. Yeah, a bit of a variegated leaf there. Yeah, yellow and green. Yellow and green. So when this one is in flower, because its flower is quite blue purple, it looks really good with the, the golden colour in the background. Yep. The flavour is probably less intense than just your ordinary officinalis. The Burgarten here, this wide leaf one, I love the look of this one. Burgarten was an estate in Germany, that's where it came from. So it's also really good in cooking though. Yeah. And it looks really nice like when you do a pasta or something, hey, and you know, if you do lasagna sheets and you stick those big stick leaves the big leaves in Because the leaves it, get a you, yeah. bit bigger than that still. And yeah. then you can do like a stack of vegetables with these um, pasta sheets with these beautiful big leaves and it looks unreal. And then the purple um, sage as well looks really nice. It's also fine for cooking as well. Very similar flavour. It just has those beautiful purple flush when the when the new growth the comes. New leaves, yeah. yeah. So the sages are really good for medicinal purposes as well. Sage and thyme tea is great for sore throats. Yep. And um, just really good for your memory as well. So if you drink a sage tea every day just to increase your memory concentration, it's they're really great herbs. A bit like the rosemary. A bit like it? the rosemary, yeah, yeah, in that fact that, you know, it, it can help um, improve and retain your memory. Oh, remember this one in the last yeah. video was a lot smaller. About that yeah, thing. it's looking really nice, <laughs> nice now, isn't it? Yeah. This is the one that Talia uses in her chicken, Thai chicken basil. It's looking great. Krapow. Krapow, yeah. Oh, and the yarrow. So this is the a pinky flowering yarrow. If you're interested, you can sign up to our newsletter. We did an in-depth article about yarrow, great herb. Let's take a look at a couple of the plants that are flowering nicely at the moment. Yeah, this Megan's Magic here is looking really spectacular. Yeah. So it's a hybrid of Salvia Anthony Parker, but I love how it's got the white, you know, the white in the with the purple looks really And it good, flowers on and off pretty well throughout the year, doesn't it? Yeah. Or mainly usually, in the summer season. Usually spring through to autumn. Yeah. It's the best. And then we try and give it a cut back, hey, yep. you know, in early spring. Yep. So that it shoots away nicely. Mexican sage. Yep. Probably one of the first salvias we, we grew. And now I think we have about 80 that we're growing. 80 different salvias. That we yeah. sell. There's probably yeah. more, actually. <laughs> this is great. This The leaves growing. of the flowers of this, I mean, are real velvet velvety. And it's such a hardy salvia, isn't it? Yeah. Here it gets a lot of water down the bottom of the driveway. It never gets watered and it seems to survive in both It doesn't get as areas. tall as this, but it just still flowers beautifully and comes yep. back nice every year, doesn't it? Yep. Mexican tarragon's looking nice too in flower. Yep, always flowers in autumn. We uh, did herb tea with this at the last open weekend and everyone loved it. It's got a really nice aniseedy flavour. Naturally sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need just fresh leaves straight into the um, teapot. All, all I do is just take the leaves off and that's enough for one cup of tea or two cups of tea. Put, put it in your cup, pour the boiling water over it, lid on top, leave it infused for about 10 minutes and it's beautiful. It's also nice in salads and fruit salads. Yep. And, and you can we, eat the flowers. And you can eat the flowers, yeah. Uh, we make a really nice dish with a whole organic chicken and chop up the leaves, mix them with some butter some orange rind, a little bit of orange juice, and some garlic, and stuff it under the skin, and then bake the chicken. Yum -o, it's so nice. Last but not least, pineapple sage. So it's looking really good with its red flowers. Got Has the native a, bees in. Yeah, the bees like it. The leaves are really nice, have a nice fruity flavour, but still a bit savoury as well. 
so it'll go in fruit salads or salads. I always use this one, whether if it's not in flour, I still use the, the leaves in, to, in my water to flavour my water. Yeah. And the flowers can go in when they're in flour. They can be used in salads, fruit salads. Delicious. Let's go have a quick look at the yep. rosellas. Okay. Remember in one of our previous videos, these rosellas were tiny and we had one fruit on them. Now, most of them are full of fruit and we'll probably pickle them next week, I'd say. Yep, some yummy jam and syrup coming up, hey? Yep. <laughs> and then we need to get them out, out so we can get the Because this is where calendulas. we plant our calendulas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and have a look at the dam. Yeah, it looks look, looking pretty empty. Not, not looking great. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is our dam and you can see it's not looking very full at the moment. We haven't had our normal February, March rains. In March 21 and 22, this dam was overflowing. The water was running right over the wall there. So it's quite unusual for it to be low at this time of the year. Normally this dam looks like this towards the end of winter because our winters are dry here in South East Queensland. And then we get the rains, storms coming in November, December. We use this dam to uh, irrigate the nursery and some of the gardens. So I usually pump out of it about six hours a day, which is a fair bit of water. If it does dry up, we're going to have to um, go to using some town water and then we have got a number of tanks around the place. Maybe I can use the opportunity if it does dry out completely to um, clean the bottom of it out and make it a little bit larger. Last time I went to do that, two days before the excavator came, it rained 100 mil and we filled the dam. I need about 80 to 100 mil to um, fill it. It's filled from a dry gully. So the last few months haven't been great for getting water into the dam, but we'll be able to get by with town and tank water. That's it for our autumn garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.